Good morning. So very happy to, to hear the feedback. Uh, I think we will have, um, we'll try to do this kind of session again uh, through the week. Um, so I showed this, this slide yesterday, you might remember it. Um, um, the point is that um, education sector in every country has good routines and, and usually also has good data, uh, but it's often very focused on you know, paper data collection, which by necessity cannot happen very often. And the typical, the big exercise is this once a year, you go to all the schools and you collect uh, information about enrollment, but also about, you know, uh, sanitary facilities and uh, extracurricular activities and w w whatever the uh, ministry decides is important. Uh, usually, in many countries, you will see the, the form is just expanding because you, you never take anything away, you just add something and so it becomes a big exercise. And in fact, in some countries also, it becomes kind of a, um, a nice incentive because the people who do the collection, they, they need, you know, they, it's, it's, a, it's a big effort, so they need some compensation, et cetera. I, I don't know any details about how it's done in Sri Lanka, but my general point is that we have all this data, but it's not uh, being used sufficiently. It's not easy, often not easily available. Uh, it often is collected quite late, it takes time to process, and then you publish the yearbook, and then it is all historical data, so you cannot really um, make, you can, you can make sort of long-term planning, but you can't really make day-to-day um, uh, -day decisions based on it, because it's just not up-to-date. So that's why we're talking about a shift. A shift uh, in, in, in several dimensions. And that's what I, I, I very briefly uh, uh, showed this slide also yesterday, um, just before the Honorable Minister's speech. But I just wanted to take us back to that a little bit. So, the, so when we digitize, when we introduce computers and internet and tablets and phones, um, it's not just about taking the paper system and moving it to uh, you know a screen it's not just about that there's it offers an opportunity to um, re-engineer what we're doing with data in the education field to think again and ideally we should start thinking about what what are we doing with the data why do we need this data because we're going to do something we're going to make some decision we're going to follow we're going to compare schools, we're going to compare um, zones and uh, uh, provinces. We're going to uh, try to find out where things are working really well. We try to find out where there's too little resources. Um, uh, we, we try to find out, uh, um, you know, what, what is the trend in terms of attendance. There's so many things we can do once we have a much more flexible uh, database that that can give everyone access to the data who should have access proper access to the data uh, and and you can uh, you can uh, collate different types of data so the first point here is coverage and with coverage we are really thinking about trying to bring in all kinds of relevant data this could be the population data it can be exam data, it can of course be staff data, human resources, where do, you, where do you have teachers, what are their qualifications, what is their experience. Um, all, and of course a lot of data about the students. So, so you want to try and bring this together to have a holistic view of the sector. So that's the coverage. Uh, then decentralization is to make this data available uh, really to uh, the levels where decisions, where sort of um, changes can be made. And that is at the divisional level, as we heard, and at the, at the school level, right? That's, that's where uh, education is, is actually affected based on the policies uh, from the national level. 
Integration is a little bit similar to the coverage, uh, but uh, it, it's also about bringing, um, bringing uh, all different systems in to talk to each other. It doesn't have to be real time. Sometimes it's better to just import uh, data, but you can again create that shared view and make it available. So that's number four. And then number five here is about collecting data much more frequently. So as frequently, so a lot of people talk about real-time data, and that is a nice vision. It's not always necessary. Some data you don't have to collect every day, or, um, but uh, because it doesn't change so often. Some data can be annual, that's fine. Like how many classrooms do you have? You're not building a new classroom every day, right? In a school, for example. Um, but, but other data is really, really important to have up to date and free and and uh, you know fresh data you want to know the situation now you don't want to know what was the situation six months ago or two years ago because that's not really so relevant to your decisions now so you want timely data because there are certain actions you can take based on those data um, but i also have a point here that uh, sometimes it's also easy for people at the central level to just think, okay, more data is better, but we also have to consider that someone has, actually has to enter this data. So there should always be a reason that we're collecting data. And then finally, granularity is really, the main thing here is how detailed is the data uh, that you're collecting. And the main shift is, of course, when you go to data about each student uh, and, and each teacher um, and is it, you know, is it daily data? So the frequency and granularity goes together. But all these things, all these dimensions, we call them scaling dimensions because we are expanding the system along various, um, um, yeah, dimensions, various goals uh, ba based on the priorities of, of, the, of the ministry, but also on local priorities. You can, you can uh, having a flexible system allows you to actually push along uh, some of these dimensions uh, as uh, appropriate. I, a general advice is to not try to do everything at the same time, but try to say what is the most important and do that really well. And then when everyone really feels like, okay, this, this is going well, now, now we get much better data, it's much more frequent then we can expand that. Maybe we also look at some other types of data and, and we, we can do the same thing. People are now familiar with the system. They have, they have access. The, they, they know how to, 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 to use different forms. They also know how to uh, look at the outputs and the dashboards. So all of these are different dimensions of the EMIS shift. 